Hi, everyone. Whew. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I got this from my sponsor, who also wants me to hold a little competition for you today. Where you can win 10 grams of this fine, juicy goodness of bud right here. Three lucky people will be selected as winners, so just stay tuned and I'll tell you how you can win this competition. First, a quick public service announcement, since every video is peppered with comments like this nowadays. Why do I get unsubscribed when I watch you all the time? Why don't my notifications work even though I did the settings? Why is YouTube keeping me from your videos? A lot of you probably don't even know that my Patreon recently got banned and this channel is now in crisis mode. Furthered by YouTube age restricting my call for help videos, and ever since I got banned from Patreon, only about 40 people moved on to my other alternatives. The remaining hundreds of you think that fighting cancel culture is about saving money. For the sake of anthropology, I can note that it's very interesting seeing how Swedish people react to cancel culture. Rather than thinking it's something to be combated, they see it as an opportunity to save money. I see. I'm very sorry about your culture, but I am gonna have to remind you that government welfare really isn't gonna work with this one. Especially since I'm not on it. So just a friendly reminder that this is a job, not a free service I do for fun, and links are in the video description. I appreciate every piece of support I get, whether you're donating directly on Subscribestar or whether you're purchasing items with my sponsor code. It all adds up and it all helps out. If you're interested in fine quality CBD products, then please use my sponsor code ARIBLATTE to get 15% off on all products. Now let's get straight into why I'm an angry foreigner this week. I've been seeing a lot of media headlines domestically so well as globally about how Sweden's far-right party is gonna play an awfully big role now. Ugh. And some people who like that make videos like, Oh, Sweden finally woke up. Well done, Sweden. It really makes me sick how many people outside of this country like to play along and keep Swedish elitism alive. You stinky European and foul Americans constantly paint us up as a predecessor country, whether it's doing something good or something bad, and I can't tell what's more pathetic. The Sweden Democrats as a party, or the long list of people with Stockholm Syndrome who don't even live in Sweden. You internet experts don't even live here, so how dare you practice senseless optimism like a hopelessly naive Swede? How dare you! I don't understand why people are freaking out expecting this to become Germany in the 40s. I also don't understand why anyone is happy. It's almost as if they believe that this is a genuine democracy. In order for the Sweden Democrats to do what they want, they need at least 51-52% of the votes. Right now, as it is, they can't present a policy change without having it approved by the other right-wing parties in Sweden, which don't exist. Because there is no right-wing in Sweden. There is a wide variety of neocon liberals and neocon socialists, though, all affiliated with the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg, and the World Economic Forum. So to make it extremely simple, these are the guys that the Sweden Democrats have to impress in order to be able to change anything. So do expect Sweden's Nationalist Party to be nothing more than a flashlight for right-of-center liberals the coming years, and expect them to make Milhouse the new Prime Minister of Sweden. Yes, that's right, and he not only looks like a Milhouse, he thinks like a Milhouse too. His so-called right-wing party, the Moderates, have done just as much to ruin this country as the Social Democrats. Now let's get into that, because that is what's actually interesting about this 
this election. Not the horrendous lack of education that people on the internet insist on. So let me get this straight. For the past years, you Swedes have had it rubbed in your face just how much the Social Democrats are the root of your country's problems. Even with a left-wing media establishment, our mainstream media has admitted to the following with primetime headlines. Much, 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 much more rape because of their policies. It is now normal for nine-year-olds in migrant neighborhoods to be carrying Glock. Social Democrats have admitted to too much immigration being what creates ghettos and crime and gangs, aka their own policy since forever. They admitted to their own policy creating this unstable situation, yet Swedes immediately forgive since that's what they automatically do with perpetrators. Always give a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh chance because that's the Swedish culture. But wait! There's more! Then we have the whole uh, creating an electricity crisis with massive energy bills ruining life for many of the country's citizens. They're telling us we need $5,000 saved up just to survive this winter. Really? But wait! There's more! Oh, and let's not forget killing tons of old people during a social crisis just so they could save money on welfare. Because what other reason do you have to not put in obvious and simple protection measures at nursing homes? I don't know, but that one really seems to turn Swedish people on. I don't really know what it is with these bug chasers that make Midsummer look like a documentary. But wait! After all of this, you Swedes still made them the biggest party. You made them even bigger than the last election. But wait! There's more! You made the Green Party increase since then as well, even after the mainstream media itself has informed you on how much chaos they've caused during their time in Parliament. They're the reason why your gas and electricity is expensive to the point of this being described a crisis. So, at this point, how are you people and your culture not the problem? Please explain that to me instead of playing a victim card that you would never tolerate when someone else actually is a victim. Are you people aware that at least half of the people that approach me outside to tell me how much they like my channel, they're not white, they're not Swedish, they're not from this country. They're usually refugees, Arabs, non-European immigrants. Because all I've seen when talking to immigrants in this country in my entire life is we want you to please deport more of the people ruining our neighborhoods and please have tougher sentencing. But Swedes are the ones refusing to change their perfect system. Not us. Think about it. You can't ever tell a Swede they're doing something wrong. You can't ever teach a Swede anything because they're supposedly the best in the world. So why would they listen to us? This is a country where half of ninth graders now get robbed, assaulted, beaten up, or sexually abused. And what do their Swedish parents care about the most? The climate! I feel like such a clown. Last election, I was going viral with the election fraud hashtag on Swedish social media, which ended up with me being blacklisted by the government itself and having them spend two million tax cronies on calling me racist, along with other media sites that the government doesn't like. Because this is how a people-loving, democracy-loving country acts. But then, after paying greater attention to the more longer standing patterns, after paying attention to what happens between elections, which matters more, I came to my senses. There is no way there is widespread election fraud in Sweden, because there simply doesn't need to be. Swedish culture is unhealthy and dysfunctional as it is, enough to explain why the people act like narcissistic lemmings, so of course that explains why they would vote as such. I am living in a country where, historically speaking, the Socialist Party has ruled Sweden for longer than North Korea has been a dictatorship. And even to this day, even in this very election, they're still the biggest. And I cannot stress enough how this all happened voluntarily. We had one prime minister who served so long that he died in office. 
and one of Sweden's other longest ruling prime ministers set up concentration camps during World War II so Sweden could help Hitler put diverse kinds of anti-Nazis in prison camps. You know actual Western countries often have rules against the prime minister sitting too long? But Sweden really is just like a period-stained version of Russia. Even today, they widely celebrate this so-called nation fodder of theirs, regardless what their political positions are. And in case you did have just a, a tiny uh, hint of vomit come across you just now, yeah, no, you should react to that word. Nation fodder? Nation fodder? And you wonder why I call this the incest village of the world? Here's the kicker. This historically long rule happened completely and utterly voluntarily with the Swedish people's full support and delight. The Social Democrats is literally why they can't stop bragging about how much better their country is to anywhere you're living right now. In the Swedish mind, Swedish is simply best and everyone else has something to learn, not something to teach. That is how the myth of Swedish exceptionalism was created, along with the creation of my constant headache trying to teach Americans things about reality outside of their own country. You come here idolizing Sweden for what, exactly? Oh, because someone told you it sounds nice? So you've never heard of corruption, Mr. American? You never get suspicious when someone is putting up a perfect facade, Mr. American. And I'm so sick of delusional Europeans being so jealous of America, they want to replicate just about everything about America, even political analysis. So there's this trope in the Swedish public discourse, right? There's this thing that Swedes are saying about how the countryside is a conservative place. Maybe in America. But, uh, you're Swedish, so stop acting like your country can be compared to an actually meaningful one. The countryside is where Swedish people are actually really smart and living in reality. They're not like Stockholm, the cause of all our problems. No, the countryside is where you have villages so small that Swedish people inevitably end up marrying their cousins. So-called Swedish conservatism is not about individuality because Sweden has never been about individuality. So what you are asking them to conserve is a type of collectivism that considers Sweden's cultural autism to be desirable, not despicable. The countryside is where the Sweden Democrats, the supposedly conservative party, are not very big at all compared to the Socialist Party. The Socialist Party is the biggest one here in the Swedish countryside because Swedish culture is inherently feminist and socialist, no matter what labels you want to dress up in. There is nothing about Swedish culture that speaks to individuality, family, and tradition. Their Swedish tradition is socialism in the mind. Their Swedish culture is the Social Democrats who literally replaced family with government with the full support of the Swedish people as a collective. Then the time came to take another step forward and free ourselves from old-fashioned, outdated family structures that still ruled the way we lived together, made us dependent on each other. The idea was deeply rooted in the most Swedish of all values, independence. In the winter of 1972, a group of politicians had a revolutionary vision for the future, an idea that if implemented would make life better for us all. Time had come to free women from men, free the elderly from their children, free teenagers from their parents. A manifesto was written, the family of the future. This was the start of a process of liberation. Liberation from dependence on our relatives. From now on, we would all make sure that each and one of us would be free. Free from each other. Pay attention to the fact that there is no brainwashing factor here. The Swedes were given the recipe of replacing family with government and they bought into it with full ferocity since socialism aligned so well with the kind of living and thinking that was already going on in this country since centuries back. 
Few people know that Sweden had worse living standard than both America and Bosnia throughout the majority of history, so early as the 40s. This is a country so historically poor and barren and inbred due to its geographically scattered isolation that you can't really expect much else than scared people living for conformity. The only reason Sweden got rich and eventually got noticed is because they worked closely with Nazi Germany and giving them crucial resources. Then after that, they lie about history and the whole world eats it up. Especially millions of Americans that just hate knowing anything outside of their own country. No, scratch that. Their own state. But let's get back to Swedish conservatism. These are a people so delusional they've defined freedom and individuality as the freedom from having to care about anyone else. The freedom from family relations. The freedom to be your own person. Hot girl summer, yeah! These are a people who think individualism means being antisocial, quiet, and boring in public, yet so religiously addicted to conformity someone has to invent the world intellectual loneliness to describe your culture's biggest fear. To be alone with your opinion. Sorry, but you're not an individualist just because you hate individuals. Oh, I'm gonna need another puff. Oh yeah, I said something about a competition at the start of this video. Uh, let's get into that. Last time we did a competition on this channel, the two winners I selected were very happy. So I'm hoping that we're gonna get good reviews this time as well. All you have to do is follow my sponsor on their social media. So look up CannabisLight.se on Instagram and Facebook. Give them a like and a follow on each platforms, and then send me a private message on Twitter or Facebook with a screenshot, proving your devotion to this fabulous company that is keeping me alive. I will be keeping a close eye on my private messages and I will be selecting three very lucky winners next week. Moving on with the video, now let's discuss that pathetic excuse for Sweden's conservative party, whose conservatism is based on preserving the social democrats' socialist legacy of Folkhemet, pioneered by that Nazi concentration camp guy I mentioned earlier. Oh, you Sweden Democrats, the conservative hope of Sweden, whose party leader is a serial cheater who's handing out government positions based on how wet and willing his party comrades are, yet he has the nerve to preach family values and base his entire party on how poorly immigrants are treating women. Maybe you should just shut your mouth if you're so pathologically incapable of respecting women yourself. I'm just saying, it almost sounds like you need a little bit of that Sharia to be a decent person, Okison. Is that really what it's gonna have to take to keep your soy boy cock in place? Really, bro? Conservative doesn't mean I need a cock cage. The more I've come to understand about Swedish culture, the more I'm sick of this talk about how important it is to preserve Sweden's culture, with zero realization of how these problems came about through Swedish culture. Ah yes, Sweden's insufferable beautiful culture of being quiet and afraid because you don't want anyone to know how judgmental you really are. This beautiful culture of socially dysfunctional norms that would get your ass kicked in any other country that's healthy. Feeling so superior to the rest of the world while all you do is hate the fact that other people have personalities. You literally hate anything that's different from your own, even down to the slightest detail, even when it's white. You even bitch about American immigrants being too loud in our stores. Oh my god, those Americans speak in a normal volume instead of being quiet like a soy-drenched virgin. Oh god, you're insufferable dorks. I've been trolling you this entire time, asshole. I'm not a Sweden Democrat. The problems in Sweden are solved by people recognizing how unhealthy their culture is and making a serious effort to change things long term. But instead, you're just expecting zero consequences for your collective actions. But no problems in Sweden will be solved by this typically Swedish fearful elitist attitude wishing to preserve their isolation from the rest of the world and its 
decent standards. Sweden is not even a Western country at this point, okay? Its cultural heritage is more like Russia's, very commie, so just cut the shit. Not every country needs conservatism, not every country should be preserved. Some should just be used as warning examples for healthier ones to learn from. And that is why people need to share my videos. Make sure people know what's going on instead of spreading this insanity to your own country. All I know is this. No election will ever matter as much as the general overall culture and the individual participation in it. What happens between elections is far more important than what goes on during the election. So I just wish Swedish people could stop pretending they care about society. Caring about politics once every four years really just means you shouldn't vote.